Well, folks, here you find ourselves now in 2019. Anyway, so far so good this year. Here we are sitting in January out in Nova Scotia, Canada. It's cold. It's cool. <laughs> and the boy is all fuzzy up like a bear. Anyways, very recently I was asked to do a, uh, a video on saddle fitting. Um, listen, there's lots of videos out there on saddle fitting. Uh, I've gone through a lot of them. A lot of them are very good. Um, I do find that there are a couple of things that, uh, that seem to be missing in some of the videos. So basically that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do a short video just about the fitting. I'm not going to worry about the different styles, um, at different applications and stuff like that. What we are going to do is just worry about the fitting and the position of the saddle. Hey bud. Um, and that way, you know, it'll give you a basis and then you got some place to start from and then you can keep moving forward and if you want more detail, you want to get into different applications and stuff like that or, or the different manufacturers, go right ahead. There's lots of information. God love the internet. Okay. There's two most important things that we got to find uh, or pay attention to is when we're fitting our saddle. One, of course, is our withers. Two is our scapula, which is right here. And what we want to do to find that is we put our hands here and it's like a dish right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little draw with our, our chalk here. I know that's hard to see, but I can't do much with the fuzzy boy. Anyways, then what we're going to do is we're going to pick up this foot and we're going to see where our scapula travels to which is back here, which is about that much, about an inch and a half, okay? So why is that important? Well, the reason that's important is this is where our shoulder is going to travel. Now, the way our saddle fits is you have two bars that come along the sides of our saddle. Now, here's our saddle. Standard Western saddle, nothing special, nothing fancy, okay? You got a bar going straight down here and a bar goes straight down here. They're flared out here to allow for the shoulders, and they're flared out at the bottom to allow for the back. Now, the, the bars only go up to about, ah, about an inch back from the edge of the skirting, okay? So, what we want to do is we want that bar right here in front of our shoulder blade. Not up on top, but just in front of it. Now, when it's flared out, that allows that shoulder, the scapula, to go back and forth. So if we got our, our shoulder going like this, we don't want our bar going like this, we want our bar going like this. But it's going to start here and go like this, and that's why they're flared out. So, the first thing we want to do is we know where our scapula is, two, we want to know about our withers. So, standard tree, standard saddle, nothing fancy. Now, I'm going to throw this up on a horse with... Okay. So we throw it up onto our horse. No, no pad, no nothing. Alright. And you can see that we got our, our cinches up here. So everything's up and out of the way. Now, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to look at is, where's our position? There's our scapula. So I want the edge of the skirting just in front of where my scapula starts. Okay? So you're not going to pull your saddle way up here and you don't have to put it way the heck back here. You want to look where your scapula is, you can slide your hand underneath and you want to make sure that that leather and that is just in front and that way your tree is back about an inch behind that. Okay? So just in front of where your shoulders are with the edge of the skirting and that way where your tree starts is about an inch back from the scapula. And if your saddle fits right, it's flared out and your scapula is missing it and it's not going to be bumping up case. So that is our first thing. So we've got it in the right position. Second thing that we're going to look at is up here where our withers are. This is our gullet. Okay. So we don't want our gullet making contact with our withers. Very important. Now, two fingers. Now this, this is our gullet, and this is our withers, and we want at least two fingers in here. Because when we sit down, of course, on the padding, it's going to push down on this. So we need this space. If you've got small hands, go with three fingers. If you've got little sausages like I do, go with two. But you want to have some space. You definitely do not want this sitting down on your, uh, 
on your withers. So now we know that this is good. The second thing that we're going to look at is this screw and this comb. So if this screw and this comb, we want that level. Okay, if it's not level, we might have to shim that saddle either up at the front or up at the back. Okay, we want that nice and level. All right. If it's not, what it's going to do is either going to push you forward or it's going to throw you back. And of course, it's going to throw your riding off. So, conch and screw need to be level, and that tells you if your saddle's level or not. Okay? Now, as we're going for the outside look right now, so now we're going to come back here, and we want to make sure that we have three to four fingers back here from our skirt from interfering with our hips of our horse. Or my horse will not be able to flex and bend because what's going to happen is my skirting is going to interfere with his hips, and we don't want that. So, you've got your position up here, you've got your level up here, you've got your, your uh, height up here, and you've got to have space back here for your horse to work. Now, now that we've got all that, now it's the one that I, what I believe is the most important thing, is how is the actual saddle fitting on my horse's back? And the way we figure that out is really simple. Just going to get the, the girth out of the way, Makes it easier to see. Take our hand, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to slide it up underneath the saddle just like this, all right? And we're going to slide it all the way across from here all the way back to here to see what it feels like. And we're going to feel the saddle bar uh, resting on the back of our hand. Well, here you can do it like this if it makes you feel more comfortable. I find that this is nice and easy. Well, I can feel it best that way. Put your Grab hold of your saddle, put your hand up underneath, and slide it all the way back. Now, with this particular saddle, I've got consistent pressure all the way from front to back. But the problem with this saddle is it's way too tight on my boy. It is like a glove sitting up against his back. Now, picture this. Saddles are like shoes. A tight-fitting saddle is like tight-fitting shoes. If you put on an extra pair of socks with the tight-fitting uh, shoes, all you do is make those shoes tighter. The exact same thing with the saddle. All right. If you take a tight saddle and put lots of padding underneath of it, all you're doing is making that saddle more tight and pinching. Okay? We don't want that. We want, if anything, you want a saddle that is bigger and looser and just basically sits on your horse. Okay? And then you can pad to it. You can pad up, you can shim it, you can do whatever, but if you've got a tight saddle, that means you've got basically no padding that you can put underneath of it, because if you do, you're just making it that much tighter. We need this. This is like a glove on him. This is no good. I, I, I wouldn't put a kid on this saddle on his back, because it's going to pinch. And if it pinches, what's it going to do? It's going to make him uncomfortable, makes him uncomfortable enough, he may even buck. Right? Worst case scenario, if he doesn't buck, and I'm sitting on it, or a heavier person sitting on it for a length of time, then guess what? You can actually do some damage. And if you do some damage to his back, it's the exact same thing as our backs. He's out for a while, and we don't want that. So, as far as this saddle goes, it fits like a glove, but a glove that's too tight. So we've got another saddle here. Watch your nose, everybody. Exact same thing. Just a standard Western saddle. Do the exact same thing. We're going to throw it back up here. We're going to find our, our withers, we're going to find our, our scapula, and there it is. So that's where I want the saddle to fit. You can see that this one here has a rounder skirt, so it doesn't have the big square skirt back here, which is something that I, I personally prefer. This is more like a barrel racing saddle. Okay, so we've got that. Now our first thing we're going to do is we're going to check back up here, check our, uh, our withers, and... There we go. This is what our withers look like. And as you can see, I can just get my two fingers underneath there, which is more than enough. That's what we're looking for, okay? You don't want anything coming down and touching that at all, okay? Very, very important. We've got that. We've got our position. What about our conch? This one here has two conchs, okay? So we're going to see we're pretty much level where we want it, which is awesome. We've got loads of room back here on our hips, which is fantastic. Okay. Again, everything's where it's want. We're level. We've got height. We're going to take our hand. We're going to slide our hand up underneath. And we're going to slide it all the way along. 
and guess what? This one here is even tighter than that one there, and, and there's a pinch point right here where there's more pressure on his spine or on his rib cage here than there is here and here. So this saddle being tight, and if you were to put something else underneath of it, it's actually going to pinch and push more onto his ribs right here, which is going to cause even more issues. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for equal amount of pressure from start to finish. Not, not a loose spot here and a tight spot back here or a tight spot here and loose and loose. We need constant pressure from front to back. And this is why we take our horse to a saddle store to fit the horse. Because it's like buying shoes online. The chances of it working are 1 in 100. Maybe 1 in 1,000 of you getting the right pair of shoes that's going to fit. Because everybody's feet are different and everybody's horse is different. So it's the exact same thing. So, when you're doing this, the most important thing, our position to start, so we know where their saddle's gonna sit. We wanna make sure that we're not on the withers. We wanna make sure our saddle is level. And then we wanna slide our hand right across the bars so that we know what it feels like on his back. Because when we sit on it, that's what's gonna create even more pressure as us pushing down on it. And that's pretty much it. That's what you need to know. And then you can go out and you can use your different application saddles and all the rest of it. Um, I per myself personally, because I ride a variety of different horses and stuff like that, I have a treeless saddle that has a lot more flexibility for fat horses, skinny horses, young horses, old horses, high weather horses, you know, it does a lot of variety. But it also has some issues. It's not the be all end all answer to everything because a treeless saddle is not the greatest thing for long long drawn out rides. They don't have the same capacity, the same firmness, and the same kind of, um, you know, they're, they're more basically a cushion. Plus, they're not great if your balance isn't the best, whereas these actually grab hold and will stay on the horse a little bit more rigidly. So, that's pretty much what we're doing. That's pretty much where we're at, and I hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, you are. Good boy.